Hello, my name is Fernando, and I'm a technical marketing manager here at GitLab. And today, I'm going to go over how to integrate a custom scanner into GitLab. Now, by integrating a custom scanner, you're going to be able to see the scanner results within the GitLab pipeline view, the merge request widget, as well as the vulnerability report and security dashboard. Now, in order to integrate a security scanner into GitLab, there's two things that you need to do. Number one is that you need to provide end users with a CI job definition that they can add to their CI configuration files to scan their GitLab projects. Now, if you're creating your own scanner or you're using an open source scanner that is already available, what you need to do is make sure that it can run on your GitLab project and that it can run within the pipeline. So that is as easy as adding it to the GitLab CI YAML file for your project. And we're gonna dive deep into all this and I'll show you with a custom scanner how I've actually implemented this. But uh, it's not a one shoe fits all, there's different scanners available, there's different ways of implementing them. So that would be up to your team and up to your requirements, but I'll go over and give you the basics to get started. The second thing that's required is that the job should then output its results in a GitLab specified format. So we have schemas for how the vulnerabilities should be outputted in the job, such as the name, the description, um, the CVE, et cetera. So there's a schema that needs to be followed. So if you're creating your own custom scanner that's going to be used on GitLab, then you can just use the schema off the bat. If you have an open source security scanner that you're going to be leveraging, then what needs to be done is you need to actually uh, make sure that the file that that security scanner outputs, you can parse it and then convert it into the GitLab specified format. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how all this works with a custom scanner that I've developed. So within our developer evangelism and technical marketing uh, group, we have a bunch of different tutorials and projects to guide you through different uh, GitLab use cases. So this particular use case is a custom scanner integration. And you can see the links in the description for this and you can learn more about how to set this up. So first, I'll dive into the scanner that I've created. So this scanner uses these rules, YAML. So it uses these rules to detect patterns within all your files in GitLab. So what you can see what this does is, it'll actually look for this regex um, within all your different files, uh, and then it'll assign it the name of the vulnerability will be password variation one detected. So that's the basics of how this scanner runs. And just to show you just the process, so what it first does is it'll actually run the scanner to detect all these different vulnerabilities. And what it'll do is it'll store these vulnerabilities in different structures. So uh, these structures I'll show you, but they'll contain the fields that are required by GitLab for um, secret detection. And once those structures are created, then you can see that there's a function which actually generates a report. And in this case, I'm using Go templates or the Go templating system in order to convert Go structures, which I populate and use them to populate an actual JSON file as a report. So you can see a new report will be generated and it'll add all the results as to the vulnerabilities and it'll add some like start and end time and some other requirements like the version and hard-coded status of success. And then it runs the generate report. So if I go back to my pattern scanner and I look at the scanner and I look at the report, you can see here that this is the template containing the schema for secret detection. So it needs to have the commit, it needs to have a list of vulnerabilities, uh, these are just part of the templating system, which I can convert um, Go structures into actual text. So this is where the actual definition starts. So it will have the version, 
of the schema, the vulnerabilities, and each vulnerability needs an ID, a category, a name, a message, description, and so forth. And these items you can see are populated from the Go structure. Same thing with location, I can find the file, the line where the vulnerability was detected, additional identifiers, things like that, that GitLab uses uh, to populate the MR view or the MR widget and populate the vulnerability report so you can see um, here. And then when I call generate report, then I just use the Go structures um, to then, um, I use the Go structures with the Go template to then generate a file um, within the root directory of the project. So that's pretty much this project in a nutshell. And the job that you need to define. So this is a job that you need to define regardless of the um, scanner that you're using, whether it be open source, whether it be a custom made one, you need to make sure that the scanner is actually going to run. So you can see that this is a script that runs, I call the firm pattern scanner and I call the scan command, applying the rules that I've defined, and then I pass in the report flag in order to generate a report. So the, the custom scanner, you'll create a job, and then you'll have the, the job run a particular command that it needs to, to generate um, the report. And if that report it does not follow the GitLab schema, then you need to create um, a job which then converts it. And then you can see that I also generate an image, so I'm going to use this image right here, um, which is coming from this project, which actually contains a containerized version of this, which allows me to run this pattern scanner scan. And you can see that over here, where when I build it, I actually build the the application and then you can see here that I build the container and push it up to the container registry where anyone else can actually use this. And there may already be containers that you have that run the commands and then in that case you just need to call that container directly with the command and you can just then create something to convert the output from that report into the output that GitLab requires. And you can see that on um, the Docker file which just builds the application and then adds it uh, to the container. So now let's see this in, in use. So we have this project called Secret List, and this project actually contains a bunch of vulnerabilities or a bunch of regex patterns that are passwords that are um, so security numbers, et cetera, that the Fern pattern scanner will detect. So what we can see here is, I'll show you passwords. There's different passwords here. If I go back, you can see that there's different clients with social security numbers and things there that we might want to detect. And we will want to run the Fern pattern scanner on this. So in order to do that, we're just gonna call uh, a remote template, and we're just going to call the fern pattern scanner.gitlab.ci.yaml that's in the jobs file of the fern pattern scanner um, project. Now, there's various different ways of actually using templates, but uh, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to be using the remote one, which is seen right here within the fern, fern pattern scanner, and this is the file that I am calling that we saw earlier. So now to go back, we can see that once that remote is added on the GitLab CI YAML, you can see that the pipeline is actually run. So if we look at pipelines, we'll look at the last pipeline that was run for the main branch, which I ran an hour ago. And if we click on that pipeline, we can see that burn secret detection is running. And that was just done by me adding the template. And when we look here, we can see that there's different rules that we're using based off the command that was run. So it's exactly the same as uh, the command that we used. And so the scanner is starting. This is the info level logs, which shows that we found this pattern. We found this other pattern. So we found all these different patterns that were emitted. 
and the scanner completed successfully and you can see that it uploaded an artifact just as needed which is the GitLab secret detection report.json so it actually went ahead and emitted that artifact. Now what we can see is if we go back to that pipeline so let's go back um, to the pipeline and let's go back and you can see that here in the security tab it's actually populating it based off of uh, this, the GitLab um, result report. So um, if you download results that the French secret detection results that you see here from the artifact that it emitted using the templating system, I'll go ahead and download that. And that is being used to generate all these um, results within this view. So what I'll do is, let me go ahead and open the terminal side by side. So what I'll do now is I'll go to the desktop where I downloaded it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cat the file that it generated, which should be GitLab secret detection report.json. And I'm going to pipe that over to JQ so we can see the output. And you can see here that it has a bunch of different vulnerabilities with different IDs, which the this is exactly what it's used for uh, detecting these items. So if we look at all the one the nine vulnerabilities that were detected, if we see password variation one, um, ident with the identifier, let's look for that. So first vulnerability has this ID. 339915 secret detection password variation one. So let's click on this. And we can see that the pattern in rule password variation one was found in a file. The pattern in rule password variation one was found in file. The pattern in the rule password variation one was found in a file. So it has the same description that I have here. It has the same name that I have here. Um, it has the same severity that I've implemented, which I assigned them all as critical, but you can use a different method of doing so. It's all at your discretion, so you can figure things out however it is that you need. Um, and then you can see that the location is readmefile.md5. So if I go down to um, the identifier, and I go here to the location, you can see that the location is here in the readme.md and line five. So you can see how all that is populated exactly how the schema looks. So that file generated used to populate this. And then you have all the different GitLab functionality that you can leverage such as dismissing the vulnerability, creating it from an issue and so forth. So that's one way it integrates, and that's how the population works based off of the JSON file that's emitted from the job. So all you need to do is get your job to emit a similar JSON file based off of the results of your own scanner and make sure that the scanner runs within the repository. So that's the basic way of getting that done. And you can also see if I want to show you the vulnerability report. This is also integrated into the vulnerability report. So you can use the same vulnerability report functionality um, with any custom scanner. And if you look at tool, it'll be under secret detection. Um, there's also a way to actually add your own if it doesn't uh, particularly fit a category, like if it doesn't fit container scanning or secret detection or SAS, you can ideally create your own category um, for the type of scanner, but that's not necessarily required. And last, I'll show you how it works in a merge request. So if you do create a merge request with these scanners running, they will be seen in the actual security scanning widget. So here you can see everything that's been detected and you can see the description and everything that comes from the file that's been emitted. Now, since this is secret detection, uh, I am looking at everything. So it's not looking at just the difference. It's looking at everything that has been actually detected within the file as a whole. So you can change this and you can make sure that you only process the diff, you only process the files that were changed, 
and so forth. So you're full, this is fully flexible and compatible to the way that you need. And if you want to see the schemas, then you can go to the report section and we actually list the schemas for the different types of reports. So for this one being secret detection, you can see what the schema should look like here and make sure that your scanner emits this. So if you want to learn more, uh, see the links in the description and thank you for um, watching this video.